Hey y'all and welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you have been here before. We are typically making some custom glitter epoxy tumblers. However, I am doing some projects around my home and I wanted to take you along on that process as well. The first thing we're going to do is our half bath. And you'll notice here in just a second, we flip over to this beautiful cabinet. This was the first thing I purchased and it come in a bazillion pieces. I'll admit my husband put that together for me and we went ahead and put that in the bathroom because it is a pretty heavy and sturdy piece. And then I took everything out so I would have a clean slate to start with our wallpaper. You'll want to make sure that your wall is nice and clean. If you were putting things back in the same place that they were before you took them down, there is no need to remove any of the screws or nails that you have in your wall. You can place this right on top of them and just cut a little slit to allow that to poke through as you are pressing it down on your wall. I measured my wall so that I could cut about an extra four inches to give me a little overhang in the creases of my wall. I trimmed off about six inches of the protective layer on the back of the wallpaper so that I, I could expose some of the stickiness. So once I had that lined up on my wall, I could press that exposed part down and keep it in place as I pressed the remaining parts down as I removed the back. I do not recommend doing this without having some sort of large squeegee so that it will help you press this down as you're removing the backing and get everything nice and stuck to your wall. I have put wallpaper up before without using this tool and I had some spots that lifted or areas that I got kind of uneven. This was a huge help in getting this adhered to the wall really nicely and allowed me to, as you can see, I'm just pressing with the squeegee as I'm pulling that back off and it went on perfectly. And then you can take that squeegee once again, make sure you have all air bubbles out from under your wallpaper and get it really pressed into those creases. You'll see me go back over those creases a few times because I want those really stuck for when we go back and trim off that excess in the end. This is actually the wallpaper that I used to cover my craft table. I wanted to get some wood and do a real shiplap feature wall, but I am super indecisive and I wanted to make sure that I liked it before I went and spent the money on the wood. And I already had this wallpaper on hand for my craft table since I use it to cover the top. So I decided to use this and honestly, I don't think I'm going to go with real wood. I'm going to leave this up because it does look really awesome and it can easily be taken down if I decided later on that I just wanted to paint this wall a different color. If we ever sell our home, the new owners can just rip this off without any damage to the wall and make it their own. I know this is going to be a little bit fuzzy, but if I zoom in, you can see that little lip at the bottom of this wallpaper. I face that down towards the floor. That way, anytime I add on a new sheet, I can easily overlap that about of an eighth of an inch and line it up with that dark line so it appears to be seamless. As you are removing that protective layer on the back, make sure that you do not rip it off so that if you do get your wallpaper on there a little bit crooked and you have to remove it, all you have to do is roll it back up from the unused end and you can just start your steps all over. It really helps it not fold into itself and just ruin the entire sheet. When you roll it back up from the unused end, it puts the back right back on it. For the piece that's going around the sink and in behind my toilet tank, 
I'm going to have to trim off a little bit of the excess off the bottom of it so that it fits around my sink and then I can press that down and work my way towards the left side. There's no way to get this straight unless you do start with around your sink or whatever you're trying to work around first. Trim the excess off and then straighten your vinyl out as you work your way through. And for that, you do want to make sure that you have a really sharp or a fresh blade on your craft or utility knife. Once you have finished your entire wall, you're going to want to go back down those creases with your squeegee tool. Make sure that they are pressed in really well and flat to the wall. Take your craft or utility knife and your squeegee. Press the blade up against the squeegee and run that down the side of your wall and your wallpaper to get a nice straight seam. It may seem like I done this very quickly, but I did not. This video is sped up. Make sure you really take your time, careful with the blade, and then remove that extra wallpaper really slow, just in case any portion of that is still stuck to what you want to leave on your wall and it doesn't damage it. After I put everything on the wall and finished that up, I did try to move along to the faucet. However, I did realize that the faucet I ordered did not come with a drain piece long enough for my sink. So I did have to go either get an adapter or an additional pipe so that I can replace that and it would fit my sink. Before I got started painting my cabinet, I wanted to take off all of the hardware, the doors, and I gave them a very light sand with 400 grit sandpaper. This Heirloom Traditions paint does state that you do not have to prep your surface. You just want to work on a clean surface. I did go ahead and clean this to get any gunk or residue that might have been on there off before I sanded. And then after I sanded very lightly, I went over with a damp cloth 
and wiped off all of that dust. I'll also use some painter's tape to tape off the drawers and the walls and floor around my cabinet. Again, we are using Heirloom Traditions Envy. I was really nervous about ordering a paint and not just going to the hardware store and getting a cabinet paint. I have saw lots of positive reviews for this paint, so I decided to give it a try myself. As soon as I got it in the mail, I opened it up and was just in awe of the color. It is absolutely beautiful. But I'm gonna be honest, whenever I started painting this door, based on the videos that I have watched of others applying this to different surfaces, this paint gives really excellent coverage on that first coat. And it didn't exactly do that for me. However, I did think, you know, I'm painting on a white surface instead of raw wood. Maybe it's just going to take a few coats because of that. And when I put on the second coat of paint, I was shook. <laughs> With as much white showing through as there was on the first coat of paint, the second coat completely covered this up and I used a very minimal amount of paint to coat this entire cabinet with two coats and I only had a couple teeny tiny little spots I had to go in and touch up and it was done. If you have not followed me or subscribed to my channel and saw my tumbler tutorials then you will not understand why I'm using a makeup brush right now. <laughs> Some of you probably was like, oh my gosh, is she using a makeup brush? Yes, I am. I'm using a e.l.f. brand all over makeup brush. It is only used for paint. 
and stays in my craft room. I mentioned earlier that my main focus on this channel is creating custom tumblers and showing others how to make certain designs, use different products that will hopefully teach them new ways, improve their skills, and in turn help them grow their business as well. One of the things that I go over a lot is different ways to paint the base of the tumblers or projects that I'm working on. We use a lot of spray paint to go over the stainless surface of a tumbler. And of course it can be cold or windy or rainy outside and you can't spray paint in those conditions. So the solution is to use acrylic paints or different brands that are made specifically to create tumblers. And if your base coat is not nice and smooth and even, then it can affect the overall design and quality of your end result. So the way to get that perfect, flawless, smooth coat of paint on that stainless is to use a makeup brush. They are typically really, really soft on the ends because it's something that's intended to use on your face. So it gives a flawless coverage as well as does not cause any lines or streaking in your paint. I wanted to get this paint as smooth as possible, so I decided just to try to use this makeup brush that I normally use in my craft room to try to get in all of those creases and crevices of this cabinet, and it worked incredibly well. As you can see, I am getting all into those creases without really having to work it in because the soft bristles of the brush just really push the paint in there without making it glob up and run down. I know that there are some high quality paint brushes out there that are made for trims and cabinets and things like that, but with my experience, this has worked well for me with other things, so I thought it would probably work for this too, and I had really good results.
I placed a couple pieces of tape on the inside of my drawers to keep them from going all the way in so that it gives it plenty of time to cure after it dries before it closes all the way and does not get stuck. I went ahead and added on the hardware to the cabinet and we were ready to finally make that trip to Lowe's and start on our faucet. Normally my husband would install this, but since I was recording this whole process for y'all, I wanted to try to attempt it myself and I was really nervous. I'm going to be honest. We have an older home and when we purchased it, it did have all of the original plumbing. So we did have some issues with leaks from time to time. So we decided to get everything replaced from ceiling to floor, all the way down to the main at the road. So the last thing that I wanted was to cause a leak somewhere from pulling on the wrong pipe or my faucet itself leaking after I have it installed. I made sure that my hot and cold valves were shut completely off and drained. Then I removed the drain in the center of the sink and then the faucet. I made sure that everything was clean and dry before I started installing the new one. I installed the faucet itself first and then the drain so I can work my way forward. After I had it completely installed, I turned the hot and the cold water lines back on and very slowly allowed water to come out so that I could check for leaks, made any adjustments that were necessary, and then had a mini celebration when I realized that I had installed the sink fixture by myself and it wasn't leaking. In the beginning, whenever I cleaned up the bathroom to get started on these projects, I did remove the caulk around the sink just so I could put a fresh coat of it on there before I finished up. So I grabbed some quick seal. This is from Lowe's and I'm going to take it around the edges of the side and the top of the sink and just down that little lip on the left side so it gives it a really nice clean and fresh seal.
After I finished up the sink, I added in my decorations and threw in the new rug and this was done. So here we have the before and after. I know the before still looked nice and clean, but now it feels like it is mine. It feels personal, it feels homey, and I love the style and the colors that are all meshed together in this small half bath. I still need to replace the handle on the bathroom door, but I will do that once I decide which ones I want throughout my entire house. I completed this half bath for a little over $350, and that does include the new cabinet and if I were to have purchased the wallpaper. Keep in mind those prices do fluctuate, so some may be a little bit different than what I paid through those links. Just keep an eye out for some good sales like I did to stay under your budget. If you are new here, we would love for you to subscribe to our channel and see what we have to offer in the future. We will be doing some more DIY home projects in the near future in addition to our typical epoxy resin tutorials. That is all I have for today. Thank you all so much and we'll see you next time.